بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه او الله شو اس ذا تروت از ترو اند انسبائر اس تو فولو ات شو اس فالس هود از فالس اند انسبائر اس تو اوايد ات اللهم اني اعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع ومن قلب لا يخشع ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن دعوه لا يستجاب لها او الله اي سيك ريفيوج ان دي فروم ذا نوليدج ويتش دوز نوت بينيفيت فروم ذا هارت ذات دوز نوت انترتين ذا فير اوف الله فروم ذا سول ذات دوز نوت فيل كونتنتد اند ذا سبليكيشن ذات از نوت ريسبوندد امين يا رب العالمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so ان شاء الله we'll continue our islamic history journey uh, today we will be talking about uh, Uh, some of the caliphs of umayyad dynasty or umayyad caliphate uh, uh, i know alhamdulillah we have uh, some new students who have joined us today and some of them have not been with us for a while and they are rejoining so uh, since this is the middle of the islamic history discussion so i will briefly talk about where we ha- we are coming from and where we are going inshallah so uh, as uh, uh usually i share maps because i i believe that if you want to learn history you have to have a map in front of you because we talk about different countries the culture we talk about the, the how islam came to this world and how it expanded so map is all, always very important so i encourage all of you inshallah to buy a world map or at least a map of middle east and put it in uh, one of your uh, room walls or living room walls so that you can refer to it so uh, this is the map of the world that i always share with you all of you and then uh, because we have already um, uh, gone through uh, uh, we started this journey this islamic history class from uh, talking about the creation of the universe that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he created the universe and how he created it and how he created uh, Uh, human beings and angels and jinns and how then afterwards he started sending his uh, messengers like prophets to this world for the guidance of humanity so this is a map uh, i could not find uh, these names in english but basically you can get an idea that this is uh, this is saudi arabia this entire map is saudi arabia you have uh, yemen here oman and then also you have palestine in this area so if you if you look at it you can see that most of the prophets uh came right in palestine or around palestine so for example uh, right in palestine you have yaqub alayhi salam daud alayhi salam sulaiman alayhi salam zakaria alayhi salam yahya alayhi salam and isa alayhi salam the jesus christ they all came to this area which is the palestine area and similarly other prophets came into some 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 came in the part of iraq some in the southern iraq uh, some in saudi arabia muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born in makka so this is how allah uh, created this universe created this world he started sending his messengers his prophets to this world for the guidance of humanity and then we studied uh, after studying all the prophets then we studied the time of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam which is also called siratun nabi or the life of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so after we completed that then we talked about the four caliphs the khulafa ar rashidun we talked about hazrat abu bakr siddiq hazrat umar hazrat usman an and hazrat ali radhiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in so after we talked about them then the 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 rashidun caliphate ended and then another empire started and it is called umayyad caliphate because the name of that uh, uh, tribe or the name of that family was umayya so they are also called banu umayya they belong to the tribe banu umayya banu umayya was also a tri- tri- sub tribe of quraish you all probably know the the tribe of quraish in uh, saudi arabia when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, came to that area and then so so past recent couple of classes we have been studying 
the the uh, caliphate of Banu Umayyah, and we talked about uh, 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 Amir Ma'awiya radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and so on. So this is just to give you an idea. This is another chart that you might want to save and maybe post it on the wall. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Adam alayhi salam, and then he the, the, the rest of the prophets followed. We know that Nuh alayhi salam, during his time, there was a huge flood. So everyone perished, but those people who took refuge in the ark that he created or he uh, built. And then we know that Ibrahim alayhi salam and then Ismail alayhi salam, Ishaq alayhi salam. And this is the actual hierarchy of uh, prophets, all the prophets. And this number that you're seeing, this is like basically number of generation. And this uh, this is approximate. Of course, in this case, Ibrahim alayhi salam had two sons, Ismail alayhi salam and Ishaq alayhi salam. So there's just one generation. So this is for sure. But then we talk about 10 generations, 8 generations. This means that this is approximate. And then we see that uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ismail alayhi salam, and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam came from Ismail alayhi salam. And there were no other prophets in this, in this lineage. Okay. But, but on the other hand, Ishaq alayhi salam had a son named Yaqub. His other name was also Israel. So we call him Bani Israel. So all these prophets are called Bani Israel prophets. And in these prophets, you can see some of very renowned uh, prophets. And by the way, these all 25 prophets names that I'm mentioning here are, are also mentioned in Quran. Even though we know that there were 124,000 prophets came to this world approximately. But these are the ones that are mentioned in the Quran, starting from Adam alayhi salam to Isa alayhi salam and then to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So these prophets are called Bani Israel. And we see that even Jesus came to this family. So we had uh, Yusuf alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Harun alayhi salam, and so on. And then finally we had Isa alayhi salam. And he, after Isa alayhi salam, uh, uh, when, he, when he was ascended, when he was uh, taken away by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then after 600 years, after 600 years, Years, then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came. So this is just a review for those who are joining us today um, as a new student. So th this is another map. Like I said, always please look at map when I talk about uh, history. Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Syria, Jordan, Palestine, Egypt. So these are all the, and then Yemen. And then these are all the countries that you should know for sure because when we talked about Islamic empire they started growing from this area and they expanded they expanded in the entire world pretty much three to four continents now the umayyad caliphate this uh, empire umayyad empire that we are talking uh, nowadays is basically it's in green so as you can see the entire saudi arabia was already conquered by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his khulafa and then Islamic empire ex started expanding both sides so entire north africa so here you have egypt libya tunisia algeria morocco spain and then here you have iran iraq syria iran and then it goes to central asia and then you you will see that kazakhstan and turkmenistan and all those areas are included so uh, now you have a pretty basic idea that how Muslim empire grew and how it expanded. Now, I'm just going to uh, go through very briefly of uh, the caliphate of Umayyad uh, empire uh, that we have already covered in last class. Okay, yeah, so this is, this is another chart I created for the understanding of, uh, so your understanding like how these tribes existed. So Quraysh was the main tribe where Prophet Muhammad was born. And then after, so this was this entire tribe, these people belong to the Quraysh tribe. But then in uh, some family members, for example, Hashim, uh, Bani Hashim family, this is the family where Prophet Muhammad was born right here. And then you can see Abdul Muttalib, Prophet Muhammad's grandfather, and then Abdullah, his father, then Prophet Wasallam. And then other people who belong to Bani Hashim. And similarly, there was an Umayyad family. This was also a sub-tribe of Quraysh. So Quraysh was the main tribe. And then there was 
another. So these are the two most popular tribes, sub-tribes like Hashem and, and Umayya, which we will talk about um, uh, the, the caliphate existed in these. Now the rest of the family members are Abdul Shams and all. You can also look at this in, in, the, in the chart, but we will concentrate on these two tribes. And, and today we will be talking about Umar bin Abdul Aziz, because we have already studied some of these. Inshallah, I'll explain it to you a little more as we go along. So now, so Umayyad Empire started right after Rashidun Caliphate. Uh, uh, Ali ta'ala anhu passed away and the Rashidun Caliphate, the four caliphs, the time is ended. So Amir Ma'aviyah, who was Amir Ma'aviyah? If you remember, Abu Sufyan عنه, who accepted Islam at the time of uh, conquest of Mecca, so he accepted Islam there. His son was Ma'aviyah. He was made governor of Syria by uh, during the time of uh, uh, Khulafa Rashidun. And so if you remember, uh, we talked about uh, the time when uh, uh, Ali ta'ala عنه, was uh, fighting with Ma'aviyah عنه, because Usman Radiallahu the third caliph was killed and his his uh, murderers his killers were not found so Maavia was belonged to Usman Radiallahu uh, family so he demanded uh, the the uh, he demanded Usman Radiallahu killers to be uh, to be captured and uh, sentenced to whatever uh, uh, their their uh, their system was according to the justice system. So uh, he became Khalifa. And then his, his son, Yazid, if you remember, he's also a very popular figure because he was the one who became the reason of Hazrat Hussain Hussain's prophet's grandson's uh, 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 killing. So this was the Karbala uh, happened during his time. And we covered this during our previous classes. Then, of course, his uh, his uh, Yazid son Muawiya came, but he was also he was he was a nice guy. He was not as bad as Yazid, but he did not want to run the government, so he ran away. So, so now you look at this. So, Abu Sufyan's family ends right here, but then they wanted to keep the the Khalifa within their family, so they convinced Mar Marwan. Marwan was who was Marwan? He was cousin of Muawiya radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And, and he was also cousin of Usman radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So when Marwan took over, we talked about his era, and then he had three three kids, Muhammad, Abdul Aziz, and Abdul Malik. So then Marwan's, after his death, uh, uh, Abdul Aziz, uh, 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 Abdul Malik took over, and then we will see that how uh, the rest of the uh, hierarchy goes. And today, like I said, we will be talking about Umar bin Abdul Aziz, because he was son of Aziz. So far, we have studied Abdul Malik and his sons, Walid and Sulaiman. So inshallah, I will keep referring back to this chart so it becomes easy for you to understand. Now, this is also a list of uh, uh, Umayyad uh, uh, rulers, Umayyad ca uh, caliphs. So we know you can, you know, you can keep track of this. I will, inshallah, be sharing these slides and also the recording with you so you can go over it again. Uh, so at, at this point, while I'm, uh, uh, while the class session is on, please concentrate on what I'm talking about, inshallah. You will have all the notes. I will send it to you. So these are the names and these are the time, time duration that they ruled. So, and this is the second one with Umar bin Abdul Aziz, who we will, we will be talking about today and the rest of them. And then Marwan bin Ibn Muhammad was the last uh, caliph of Umayyad dynasty. Okay, this is another, another, another chart. I numbered them so you will also understand. So we talked about Muawiyah and his son Yazid and his son uh, Muawiyah too. So this, is, this was the first caliph of Umayyad Empire, second, third. Now it goes to fourth, which is cousin of Muawiyah. So this is number four. Then his son, Abdul Malik, became number five. So he was the fifth caliph. Then after him, we had uh, Al-Walid that we talked about during last class. And then uh, Sulaiman, which we also talked about in last class, number seven. So we have already talked about one to seven caliphs. And today we are going to talk about Umar, Umar bin Abdul Aziz, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Umar bin Abdul Aziz, because of course he was, he was not the 
Sahabi. So we cannot say radiallahu ta'ala. Anyway, and then we will continue and we'll see that all together there were 14 caliphs who came in Umayyad Empire. So we have talked about Amir Mahavia. He ruled for around 20 years and he's right here. Then we have uh, Yazid who is right here. He ruled for only three years. And then we have Ma'avia. He ruled only for seven months. So here's Ma'avia. Then we have Marwan. Uh, he ruled only for 10 months. Here's number one, number four. Then Abdul Malik. He ruled for 20 years and a lot of, uh, a lot of new construction and establishment of the government and some territorial gain also happened during his time. Then we see that uh, 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 Al-Walid bin Abdul Malik, he ruled for 10 years. And so he's right here, Abdul uh, Al-Walid bin Abdul Malik. And then we see that Suleiman ibn Abdul Malik, who ruled only for two and a half years, but many things happened during Suleiman's era. And we have discussed this during our last class. So, and I will give uh, uh, an, another brief overview of what happened during Suleiman's Abdul Malik's time. So where's Suleiman? Suleiman is right here. And then we'll see that after, after him, then Umar bin Abdul Aziz uh, became, became caliph as number eight. Okay, so after Muawiyah II died, there was a civil war for almost 14 years. So be, Muslims were fighting with each other, they were killing each other. And this had started by at the time of Usman Ta'ala, but it kind of continued. So three people fought for the caliphate at that time. Who were those three people? Abdullah bin Zubair. He was Sahabi of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then you have, there was another guy in Iraq, Mukhtar ibn Abi Ubaid. And he was initially uh, 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 not supporting Ali Razullah Ta'ala. No, finally, he, he, he felt uh, guilty and he also wanted to become Khalifa to rectify some of his actions. Then the third one was Marwan bin Hakam. And he is the one who declared himself a caliph once the 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 uh, uh, the caliphate was about to be gone to another family uh, so uh, so now what we'll I'll, I'll show you this is what happened during the time of uh, uh, abdul malik so what happened when abdul malik was a ruler uh, as you can see this map I, I would really like to concentrate here, inshallah, okay? So this is the map of Middle East. Now, what happened? Because during the time of uh, Amir Ma'awiyah, he had already pretty much captured all this area, the entire North Africa, and so on. So this is what happened during Al Walid ibn Abdul Malik. So capital of Umayyad was where? In Syria. So this is Umayyad Caliphate. Then Tariq bin Ziyad, he was, uh, he was a, a, journal, a general who was sent to conquer Spain. And he was sent by who? By Abdul Malik, one of the Umayyad Empire's caliph. So what he did is he basically, he was from Morocco and he was a Berber. Where they, they, there was a um, newcomers to Islam. They, they, this is their clan. So they, he was given the orders to go and, and uh, help people who are living in Spain and, and give them relief, but also spread the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and spread Islam. So he took his army and he went to Spain and he conquered. He reached up till France. So just remember Tariq bin Ziyad, he crossed the, uh, the, uh, the, this is called Gibraltar. This is Strait of Gibraltar. And there's a small passage which goes, this is the Mediterranean Sea, and this is the Atlantic Ocean. So this is what he crossed, and then he went to Spain and so on. So Tariq bin Ziyad conquered this area. Then Muhammad bin Qasim, I'm pretty sure you all know his name. Muhammad bin Qasim was the nephew of Hajjaj bin Yusuf, and he was from Taif, Saudi Arabia. So he was sent where? To the current area of Pakistan, which is Sindh. This is Makran and Sindh. So he, he was sent here to, of course, uh, provide relief to Muslims who were living here, but also take the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he went pretty much across Pakistan, the existing Pakistan. At that time, Pakistan did not exist. It was pretty much all India. But he went there and then he started uh, 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 conveying the message and then he conquered uh, Multan and he kept going until almost the borders of Kashmir. So how, how many people so far? Tariq bin Ziyad on the... Uh, on the west side and Muhammad bin Qasim in the southeastern Asia. Now the third person, his name was Qutayba ibn Muslim. So he was sent to Central Asia. 
So where did he go? He basically went to con conquer Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, uh, uh, and all these uh, part of Afghanistan and, and uh, all these places. So if, if he reached to the borders of China. So these were three Muslim generals that were sent to conquer all these areas by Abdul Malik. Abdul Malik was uh, a caliph of Umayyad Empire. So now when this all happened and they, they are now, uh, uh, Tariq bin Ziyad is entering France, he's, he's conquering the, the southern part of France he had already conquered and he's marching on and, and then he would have gone to Germany and Italy and to you know the rest of the Europe he would have conquered if he had chance. But there's a very sad event that happened. So Muhammad bin Qasim, similarly, he was about to enter maybe borders of China and he would have gone down south to India. And similarly, Qutayba bin Muslim would have gone to, to enter China pretty much and Mongolia and all these places. So this is a very turning point of Muslim empires. So what happens right after these th three generals were there and conquering and moving forward, uh, the, the Walid ibn Abdul Malik passed away. So when he, he passed away, let me show you the map uh, so that you understand. Yeah, so when Walid, he was the one who sent all these people to these uh, expeditions. So when he died, his brother, Suleiman, became the caliph. Now, Suleiman had some kind of vengeance against his brother. He had some kind of animosity. And Allahu Alam, there are so many uh, theories about what happened. But what Suleiman did is let me share with you. So what Suleiman did is he basically uh, brought all these three people from their fronts and killed them. So he brought Tariq bin Ziyad to Syria, killed them. He brought Qutayba bin Muslim from Central Asia, brought to Syria, killed them. He brought Muhammad bin Qasim from uh, Pakistan area and killed them. So this was a seriously sad era of Muslim dynasties. But anyway, life goes on. So then uh, after Suleiman, because there was so much chaos and so many uh, issues were happening. So now comes Umar bin Abdul Aziz. Umar bin Abdul Aziz, he came and he took power in 717 AD uh, which, and he ruled only for two and a half years. And as you can see, after number seven, the Umar bin Abdul Aziz came to power. His father was Abdul Aziz, but his father uh, was never a caliph, but he was son of Marwan. So this is how the caliphate came to Umar bin Abdul Aziz. Now, Umar bin Abdul Aziz was one of the most renowned and respected caliphs of Umayyad dynasty. He was a very pious. Um, he, was, he was like a normal person. He was not in much into politics, uh, but uh, he was uh, um, a very charismatic person. He had very charismatic personality and everyone respected him. Some Muslims historians even consider his era as a continuation of Rashidun Caliphate. Rashidun Caliphate is the era of four caliphs. So some people say that after Ali radiallahu anhu passed away, then the kingship started by Hazrat Ma'awiya radiallahu anhu. And for all these times, all these seven rulers, they did not follow the, uh, the true path of what uh, had been guided by the four caliphs. But now when Umar bin Abdul Aziz came and his two and a half years really brought back some memories of the, 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 the four caliphs. So sometimes people also call him as a fifth caliph. He became caliph in, in 99 Hijri, 717 AD, after the death of uh, Suleiman bin Abdul Malik. His father's name was Abdul Aziz, who was son of Marwan bin Hakam. His mother's name was Umm Asim, <clears throat> who was granddaughter of Umar bin Abdul Aziz. So remember this. So his name is Umar bin Abdul Aziz, but he, you know, he's related to Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the second caliph, through his mom's side. His father, Abdul Aziz, was governor of Egypt for 21 years. So Umar, Umar's education and tarbiya was done in Egypt among great scholars. He had good influence in his royal family since he was also nephew and son-in-law of Abdul Malik. So he had a, 
uh, he belonged to the royal family and he still had that respect but at the same time because his his lineage goes from his mom's side to umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu so that also becomes very important for him he served on many official positions when walid decided to make him governor of madina because when walid was a caliph he made him governor of madina and he accepted it on a condition that he will not hurt and harm people of hijaz as other rulers of umayyad dynasty had done now let me explain this so <clears throat> when this uh, karbala thing happened and there were two factions ali radiyallahu ta'ala anhu's army and then the Mir Muawiyah's army. So there was already a faction. These were all Sahaba. These were all Muslims, but they kept fighting with each other. And this animosity and this hatred towards each other continued. So when he became governor of Medina, because Medina, Mecca and Medina, they they were still some people who uh, who were uh, with the with the uh, uh, Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu's mindset. So because Umayyad dynasty was Umir Ma'aviyah's mindset, so they started uh, 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 hurting some people in Makkah and Medina. So when he became governor, he made uh, uh, Walid promise that he would not harm anyone in Hijaz. And Hijaz means Makkah and Medina. He was known for being always well-dressed and used extremely good fragrances, Idr. After the death of Suleiman, when he was given the Khilafah, he did not want to accept it. So he refused. But many people convinced him uh, and said that whatever happened in Umayyad, the royal dynasty, uh, is not going to be repeated. And some of his people, his close allies, uh, said that they would support him to change things in the Umayyad dynasty. So he took uh, Khilafah. He, uh, he was very uh, simple, but he also changed his life completely when he became, when he became Caliph. He was not spending any money on his family or himself. He gave everything away to Betul Mal, which is the treasury, because he did not have anything that belonged to people or people of the, the, the his khilafa, he did not want to use on himself. He even gave his transportation, which was a mule. He only used a mule and he gave all his royal uh, transportation and the chariots and the horses back to Betul Mal. He wanted to bring a huge change. So the regular Umayyad dynasty had issues. What were those issues? The state treasury had become rulers' personal property. They were using it for their own gains. Their religious values had gone down big time. General public had no freedom. So everything had to be uh, ruled by the ruler. And then whatever they wanted, whatever the royal family wanted, that, uh, that was the, the rule. That was the rule, and then the general public did not have any any choice uh, to choose how they wanted to live their lives. Government officials had become very rich and public became poor. Just like in today's world, if you look at third world countries or even you know any any country in this world, people who are rich are becoming richer and richer, and people who are poor are going poorer and poorer just because of the system. So the same system kind of existed there. So these were the ills, these were the problems of that society. So he wanted to revive that. So he immediately took following actions. He returned the wealth and properties to its rightful owners. All the properties and wealth he had, he transferred to Baytul Mal, to the treasury. He gathered all his relatives and asked them about their wealth. It was found that at least one third of their wealth did not belong to them. So he ordered for that to be released to Baytul Mal. So anything that did not belong to the rightful owners, then he took them away from them and uh, and deposited in Betul Mal, which is the treasury. They did not agree. So these people did not agree. Uh, and then he had to threaten them that if they didn't, if they do not release that wealth, which is not, uh, which does not belong to them, so they would be uh, they would be uh, prisoned. So that that's how he had to go by in order to make sure that everything goes well. Finally, they all gave in, and he was able to uh, put them in Betul Mal. Now, one uh, very popular thing what he did is all the uh, all this royal family and their friends, what they did is they illegally transferred a lot of properties from general public's names to their own names. So he, he asked his people to bring all those documents and he used scissors and cut them. 
he cut them in pieces and he destroyed them so that they could, they could not claim uh, the illegal properties that they had snatched from these people. His relatives and friends and government officials got really angry, but he did not listen to them and he did what was right. He even gave away his expensive rings. So of course, at that time, because he was also belonged to a royal family, he had rings and jewelry and a lot of ornaments, but he gave everything away, whatever. Even if someone had given him a gift, just because he received those gifts, being a royal family member, so he felt that it did not belong to him. He established new system of treasury and its usage. He reduced paper and stationery. He even and to the extent where he did not want to use extra stationery in government offices. So instead of <clears throat> writing too many letters or have, you know, writing it on papers that are thick and expensive. So he changed all that. He issued wazifa for all handicapped and helpless people. So he's just reviving the entire society, the entire system back to the way uh, the, the, the four caliphs had run the government. He issued funds for infants to be fed. Just imagine his, his, uh, his vision was such that, you know, these infants who are today, they're very, uh, you know, uh, they're young, young kids, but tomorrow they will be, uh, they will be taking charge of things. So he wanted the infants to be fed, nurtured and trained. Uh, so they are full of tarbiya. So when they become adult and they start taking these government offices, they, they, they should be able to run it in a, in a way that is pure Islamic and also so that they're intelligent. Slowly, the entire society was revived to Islamic and welfare system. Now, Hajjaj bin Yusuf, if you remember, we talked about him. He was a very tyrant uh, uh, ruler. He was, uh, uh, he was ruling during the time of Walid. But uh, he even started taking jizya. Jizya is a tax that is imposed on non-Muslims living in Muslim empires or Muslim uh, uh, government, under Muslim government. So, but Hajjaj, he went as far as he said that that uh, even Muslims who are non-Arabs, so people from Iran, from Central Asia, he started charging taxes from them as if they were non-Muslims. So this was also uh, very unjust. So, uh, so Umar bin Abdul Aziz abolished that system. He brought Islamic Sharia system into existence in every part of his government and society. He banned drinking and made sure that non-Muslims did not provide alcoholic drink to Muslims, because non-Muslim people were still drinking, but then this was a way for Muslims to, to get their alcoholic drinks, but he banned that and he made sure that they do not provide it to Muslims. Now, he, re he revived all moral and re religious values as they were observed during the time of Rashidun Caliphate. It was also customary that khatib, you know, those uh, people who give hope during those days because they were all against uh, Ali and Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein. So some of them even uh, were saying bad things about Ali and Hussein during their khutbah. So he strictly forbidden that. He made sure that none of these uh, bad names are called to those people. But what he did is he took those things uh, out and he was the one who added this following uh, uh, part of uh, khutbah that even today when you go to any masjid towards the end of khutbah when khatib ends uh, he recites this inna allaha ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha 'anil fahsha'i wal munkari wal baghi ya'idukum la'allakum tazakkarun so i'm pretty sure or all of you who have heard any khutbah, this is pretty much part of uh, no matter where you are, you are in Pakistan or India or Arab countries or African countries, this part is pretty much added to every khutbah. So subhanAllah, this is also a, a, a something that to be remembered by uh, for Umar bin Abdul Aziz. Now, during, during conflicts with Romans, he strictly ordered his army not to fight until they gave them option to become Muslim. Now, there had been also some uh, reports that some of the Muslim commanders, because they wanted to just capture other territories, so they, they would just go attack and conquer. Uh, uh, so they were not following the proper procedures that is given by Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the Khulfa Rashidun, that first you have to go and you have to invite them to Islam. 
if they don't uh, accept Islam, then the, you give them an option that Muslims, you can live under Muslim rule, but you have to pay jizya, a tax, so that we uh, Muslim rulers can provide uh, protection and they can uh, look after them. And even if they refuse that, then they allow them to fight. And of course, fight means uh, proper fight. So whoever wins, wins. So this is uh, this was the procedure, but which is again not followed in today's times. But Islam has its own system, and that is what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to to enforce that system uh, in this world. So due to his good and just governance, many people accepted Islam, and so many people when he when he. When his army went to fight, and when uh, their character, when they looked at their character and uh, their their morals uh, value, so they accepted Islam. So this was another uh, thing that Umar bin Abdul Aziz used. He sent letters to landlords and property owners in Sindh. Sindh, remember, this was Muhammad bin Qasim's place. So many people had already accepted Islam, even though Muhammad bin Qasim was called back and was killed. But due to his uh, uh, propagation of Islamic uh, system. Uh, uh, there were many, many people already accepted Islam and sent them in the entire Pakistan. So he sent letters to them. And then he said the, the non-Muslims who still exist there, he wanted them to accept Islam. And many of them did accept Islam. Islam, because Muhammad al Qasim had a very, uh, 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 even Hindu people used to respect him. And there was a time when uh, some Hindu people, they liked him so much, they started uh, making his statues and they were worshiping him. And so, you know, so history turns and history uh, tells us a lot of uh, realities that happened during that times. But all we have to do as a student of history that we learn from those things and move forward. Things were constantly going in the positive direction when he got seriously sick. Umar bin Abdul Aziz got sick. There were two reports about his death. One says that he died of natural causes. The other reports say that he was poisoned. People who still supported Umayyah's normal rule because they wanted to go back to corruption and, and not have the decency of uh, Islamic values, they, they want wanted to go back. So they hired a slave to kill him and gave him 100 Ashraf. Ashraf is the currency name that was uh, uh, that was used during those times. When he found out who gave him poison, he took that money back from that person, arrested him, but uh, and he took that money and uh, deposited it in Bethel Mal, the treasury. But then he let him go because he did not want to take his personal revenge. He said that you cross the borders, you go away but, and never come back. But he took that money out of him and then he passed away. Uh, he did not leave any money for his kids and family members. And they were very upset. His family members, his sons, his daughters, his wife, everyone uh, wanted to have some of whatever he had. And he said no. Uh, uh, so he, 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 he asked them two questions. He said uh, before his death, he said, did, uh, so he asked them a question that did they prefer wealth and let their father go to Jahannam or hell? Or they earned their own living and let their father go to Jannah, to paradise. So many of them agreed that, and then they, they did not get any inheritance from him, and they had to make their own living. But subhanAllah, so this is how Umar bin Abdul Aziz's life was, and this is why he was, he was known as possibly the fifth caliph of Islam. He was only very, he was very young when he died. He was only like 39, 40 years old at the time of his death. He wanted to change the Mulukiyat, the kingship back to Khilafat, the caliphate in Umayyad rule. And he was very successful in doing so. But as we will study uh, in our next sessions, that uh, uh, same kind of people who uh, ruled before Umar bin Abdul Aziz, they brought their ill doings back into the government and then things uh, just kind of, uh, this was the only time when there was a true Khilafat during Umayyad Empire. He really respected Islamic scholars and always consulted them. So uh, towards the end of his life, he was also worried hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi were not all collected. So he wrote letters to the governors. He wrote letters to the governor of Medina and announced in other areas to find, collect, and write all authentic hadith of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and compile them and then, uh, you know, reproduce them and then uh, spread it to the rest of the Muslim community. So he had, within two and a half years, he, he did a lot for the Muslim now, I just wanted to show you, this is the last slide, probably. I just want to show, this is Omar bin Abdul Aziz. So uh, 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 his, uh, his, his father was Abdul Aziz ibn Marwan. And then I've already shared the chart with you. But his mother, Umm Asim bint Asim, uh, she was 
uh, granddaughter of Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So this is how he was related to Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. But at the same time, his father was Abdul Aziz. So he belonged to the Marwan family, which is the Umayyad uh, dynasty. So this is the chart you can see. Inshallah, we will continue uh, in our next class, the rest of the Umayyad Empire Caliphate, and then we'll move on to the Abbasid Empire. So uh, Jazakallah khair all for attending. We will take, I'll end this session right here, but but we will take question answers and then we will have an open discussion session. So I, I highly encourage all of you to be, uh, please uh, be part of the discussion, be part of the question answer session. So until next week, inshallah, uh, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, nashadu an la ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.